Hello, class. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to solve various geometry problems by applying the between figure and then figure ratios. In this example, we have a tree and a flagpole that are cast in shadows. We want to write an equation that's solved for the height of the tree in terms of the length of the shadow it casts. Why don't you try to solve that problem, and I'll show you how I went about uh, my solution. So first thing you should notice is that these triangles, the small and large ones, are similar because of angle-angle. They share this angle over here by uh, the reflexive property, and they each form right angles with the ground. So they have two angles in common, angle-angle. So one way to go about this is to write a proportion. And on the left-hand side, we're relating the height of a flagpole to the height of the tree. On the right-hand side, we're relating the length of the shadow of the flagpole to the length of the shadow of the tree, which is S. And so to solve that, you would do cross products and divide by 8, and you get 3 halves S. Now, a different uh, equation, different proportion that gets us the same answer is this one. Now we're saying 12 divided by 8 is going to be the same as the height, length, the uh, height of the tree divided by the length of the shadow. Now in this case, we're relating distances within a triangle. We haven't really done that before, but this is still correct, and we'll see why uh, in this lesson. So you solve that, and you still get the same answer. In this one, we're looking for the missing side lengths. So try to do that by using what we know about scale factors. Let me show you my solutions. So to find the length of CB, I said, well, this is going to be a reduction if we're going from the large one to the small one. So it's 4 divided by 12. Multiply that by the length of C prime B prime, which is 6, and that gives you 2. To find the length of A prime B prime, well, we'd be looking at it from the point of view of an enlargement, and I go from the small one to the large one. So our scale factor would be 12 fourths, multiply that by 5, and you get 15. Now, we use the ratios 4 to 12 and 12 to 4 to solve this problem. Are there any other relationships we could have used to get the same answers? Well, it turns out there are. We could have also looked at the ratio of lengths within one of the uh, triangles. So if we had divided AC by AB, we would set that equal to AC divided, I'm sorry, we set that equal to A prime C prime divided by A prime B prime to get this equation. And we solve that and we still get 15. We could also uh, have done the same method to figure out the length of A prime C prime. So we set up a proportion using the facts given here, or the method given here, and you still get the answer of 2. So now we know three different ways of solving these problems with similar triangles. We can solve them by using the scale factor. We could solve them by using the ratios between figures, which is very similar to what we've been doing with scale factor already, because if you look at these, these are all equal to the scale factor. And depending on which way you're looking at the, uh, the dilation, you could be looking at the reciprocal if you want to look at the enlargement, so the reduction, or vice versa. Now the last one is, is the new one we've been talking about. This is the ratios within figures. So now we're looking at dividing distances in the same triangle, relating that to the, uh, to the ratio of the corresponding sides in the other triangle. So why does this work is the big question. Why can we do this? Well, think about it. If we have a ratio relating two lengths within the same triangle, so for example, A, B, and B, C, we can multiply that fraction, that ratio, by R divided by R. Because that's just one. We know R isn't zero, so we can do that. And we know that the length, when we multiply R times AB, that's going to be the length of A prime B prime. And the same uh, logic gives us B prime C prime. So this is why the within figures uh, ratio method works. So now we're going to apply our knowledge to figure out how tall buildings are. So say you want to know how tall a building is. Would you really want to go and measure that with tape measure or some other tool? Not, not really. That's going to be you know, probably dangerous or uh, very tedious at the very least. So I think it's probably going to be easier if we use indirect measurements. So here's the word problem we're looking at right now. 
you want to figure out how tall the building is with this information you have. So the student's uh, standing over here. And the height we're looking at would go straight up here. So because of the angle, it doesn't look uh, like it's touching the top of the building, but this is how tall the building is, black line here. And first of all, why are these triangles that we see can, um, similar? Are they similar? Well, like we had before with the tree problem, they share this angle over here by their flexor property. And we have right angles. So by angle angle, those are similar. So try to figure out what the height of the building is by using scale factors. Let's go through that, and then I'll show you my solution. So the scale factor here is an enlargement. So we're looking at 170 divided by 60, which gives us 2.83, and the 3 is repeating. And so we multiply the scale factor by the height of the flagpole to find you know, it's 99.16, and the 6 is repeating meters. Now, if we use the other two methods, we should get the exact same answer. So try to solve the problem by using the between similar figures method. So here, we're going to, lots of ways to set it up. I said here, let's divide 35 by H. That's going to be the same as 60 divided by 170. Apply the cross product, divide by 60, and you get the same answer. So now we want to figure out the height using the within similar figures method. So I said here, let's divide 35 by 60. And that has to be the same as h divided by 170. And we solve that, and we get the same answer. So all three methods are equivalent. In this example, we have four similar triangles. And they're all right triangles. So we know that this long side of each is the hypotenuse. And they're saying the horizontal length is the base. And the vertical length is the height. We want to write some uh, write some within figure ratios that are going to be helpful through uh, in a future chapter. So first, what ratio can we write that compares the height to the hypotenuse of this first triangle over here? Height to the hypotenuse that would be four divided by five, which is zero point eight. So I prefer fractions. Maybe you prefer decimals. It's up to you. We'll get the same answers in the end. What about a ratio that compares the base to the hypotenuse? That would be 3 divided by 5, which is 0. 0.6. And finally, the height to the base. The height here is 4, and the base is 3. So 4 thirds, 1 and a third, 1.3 repeating. So now we're going to solve the rest of these problems by using the within figures uh, ratio. So. Which ratio would we use to figure out the height of the triangle? So we're looking for the height. The question you have to ask yourself is, what do I already know? Well, we already know the base of this triangle. So we're going to use the ratio that compares the height to the base. What ratio would we use to find the hypotenuse of the triangle? So now we're looking for the hypotenuse. And what do we already know? Length of the base. So we want the ratio that compares the base to the hypotenuse. So now how do we find the unknown lengths? Well, to find the height, we're using h for that. And we learned in the previous part of the problem that the relationship between the height to the base is 4 to 3. So we set up that proportion, and we use the cross product, and divide by 3, and you get 2. To figure out the length of hypotenuse, we would use the ratio that compares the base to the hypotenuse, which is 0.6 or uh, 3 fifths. They're both the same number. I'm just showing you that you can solve this either using a fraction or a decimal. Use the cross product, and you get 2.5. Similar idea, but now we're talking about triangle B. Which ratio would you use to figure out the base of the triangle? Well, we already know the heights, and we're looking for the base. So we want the ratio that compares the height to the base. What if you're looking for the hypotenuse? Or you already know the height, and so we want the ratio that compares the height to the hypotenuse. 
So the unknown lengths. Here's our proportion. Use the cross product and divide by 4, and you get 3.75. And a similar idea to find the hypotenuse. Here I just showed you you could use the decimal instead, and you end up with 6.25. And finally, same idea for part C. The ratio we use to find the height. We already know the hypotenuse, so you want the ratio that compares the height to the hypotenuse. And you want to figure out the base, so you want to compare the base to the hypotenuse. And we set up our proportion. Use the cross product. Divide by 5, you get 6.4. Same idea, but with a decimal, E is 4.8. So in this lesson, I'm sorry, not there yet. The uh, relationship of the ratio to the corresponding sides within a figure to the ratio of the corresponding sides in a similar figure. What's that relationship? Well, we know that the corresponding lengths of the similar figures are going to be proportional. But the ratio of the two lengths within a figure, that's equal to the corresponding ratio in the of the two uh, corresponding lengths in the similar figure. So the within figure method's going to give us a ratio, but that's not the same as our scale factor. It's a little bit different. And how does that relationship help us find the lengths of unknown sides? Well, let's just verbalize in the process that we use. We can write a proportion using those ratios that are equal and use the cross product. So in this lesson, we learned how to solve problems using the between figure and within figure ratios. Here's a little recap of what we learned. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.